right. So welcome everyone this afternoon. Thanks for coming. It's good to see you all and hear you all. Um, we've been, we were, uh, Kendall reminded us this morning in our board meeting that we had plans to try more online everything in our strategic plan. So we are really taking advantage of trying more of everything at this point. Um, as we begin today, we all want to say a big thank you to the RSA staff for all that they're doing uh, to keep us operating and going during this time. I mean, or not going, but they've done a lot of work to make it so that RSA will work for us and we appreciate that. Um, I just have a few little things on my part of the agenda. Um, you've had the, a chance to review the adoption, uh, excuse me, review the agenda. So we would need a um, someone to endorse its, its approval and a second on that, please. This is Alyssa from Morton, I am move, I move, we approve. Thank you. This is Lexi from Washington, I'll second. Thank you very much. And then you've also had a chance to review the minutes. So in like manner, we would need uh, endorsement and a second of that, those. This is Alyssa from Morton, I move, we approve. Thank you. And Lexi will second. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you want to say something, Kendall, I think told us that you could, you have to choose the unmute. You don't, in your little box, you have to, it's kind of up towards the right of mine. So you might, if that gives you a chance to, uh, to look for it when you need to. And um, let's see, RSA staff anniversary member. Uh, we are congratulating Erica this afternoon on 11 years with RSA. Um, congratulations, Erica. Thank you for all that you do for us. To us, it doesn't seem like that long because you always make our jobs so easy, but we appreciate you and all that you do. And then at this time, Gina's going to jump in and give us a uh, her director's report of director's report from this morning. Hello, everybody. I hope you're well. Oh, there's, hey, look at the cutie. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> um, just a quick board update. Um, other than approving the minutes, we did not take any official action, so that was exciting. Um, we did have a lot of discussion, though, um, a lot, which I think will be repeated later here today by all of us in uh, Kendall. Um, we did want to give you a heads up. Um, the, we did sign the revised grant application for rails for fiscal year 21. Um, it was the second one we signed. Um, the first one did include those three positions that, that Kendall has been talking about, the the um, design, marketing, administrative person, um, and a few other positions, um, Rails, Kendall, and I think we can probably all agree that knowing what's coming forward, adding positions probably is not the most prudent thing to do. So we signed a revised one that took those positions out, um, but that doesn't necessarily change. The, the, we get the same level of support um, from Rails with the second application as well. Um, and so that those three positions will be, will be delayed for a while. Um, other than that, I don't have a ton to report that we won't be discussing later. So we'll just move right along. Okay, thank you, uh, Gina, for that. And I think at, that, at this point, then, it is in Kendall's hand for many, many good and exciting reports. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Um, so the package went out kind of late. I'm sorry about that, but I don't work nearly as uh, well at home as I do in the office. I'm sure all of you can appreciate that. And it's been a little busy, so um, the package went out a little late. Um, we have written uh, committee meeting notes from the reports committee and the RSA day committee. Um, as you all know, since RSA Day got canceled, there was quite a lot of activity around that. Um, so just to give everybody a heads up on that, um, I believe the committee will be meeting and trying to pick a date for next year now that we know when the Kosugi date is and we can work around that. So did anybody have any questions about either the reports committee or the RSA Day committee report? 
please unmute and chime in if you do. What is going on here? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to the written package. So here are the things in the written package that went out. These were links uh, two, three, and four uh, on the uh, users group webpage. So the strategic plan update, we'll talk about that later. Um, we did do a enterprise upgrade on Monday. Um, supposedly it wasn't supposed to break any of the uh, external login links on your websites, but that is one of the things that frequently changes when we do an update. So I did check several websites and it worked. I was able to log in just fine from your library website, but I can't, of course, check all of yours. So if you want to go to your uh, public facing website and if you've got buttons there to log into the My Account feature of RSA CAT, please do so. And then uh, if it's broken, send an email to the help desk and we'll get you some code um, that works for your library. And when you send that email to the help desk, please tell me what library it is you're from. So I don't have to guess because all of that code is customized. The help. All right. Um, there's a, a sheet with new parameters. There's a updated uh, helpful resources for catalogers cheat sheet. That was basically showing you where to go on the uh, RSA website to find things. Um, there's the phased reopening guidelines we're going to be talking about uh, as the last whole part of this meeting. Um, I, also on there was a, a list of school items checked out to public libraries in Excel format. And it's basically every school item checked out in every public library. Um, all you have to do is click on the library, um, checkout library or item library drop down to pick your library to see either if you're a school where your items are or if you're a public what school items are still in your library. So that was something we had uh, several people ask for. We will republish that report every now and then and send out the link to it so that you can see as things get checked back in and sent back um, how those things change. I also wanted to do a live demo of Blue Cloud Visibility in Google. I know this is something we've been talking about for years. Um, it worked um, initially, and then lots and lots of libraries jumped on Blue Cloud Visibility. That's where Circe Dynex is taking an extract of our database, turning it into BibFrame, sending it off to, I don't even remember who now, some company uh, whose name I'll remember uh, at an inappropriate time. Um, and then they then publish that to the, I think it's library.link website and Google scrapes that and then they can use information about your library and your contents anywhere they want. Uh, I need to, well, I was just going to click, hold on. I'm, I have a live demo link, but it's not opening. Oh, now I have the spinner of death. That may be bad. All right. Well, let me, I have to share something different here. Hold on just a second. Okay. So here is a browser. So we'll go to Google and we will look up a book. So we'll just go with T is for, because I'm sure everybody's got it. We'll search for this. You'll notice over here uh, in the Google sidebar, uh, their infograph, they've got information about the author and the book. They've always had this bit here where you could get it on Audible or Google Play or Barnes and Noble. What is newer, uh, this started working a couple months ago, is the borrow feature. Um, the ADML has a copy of this book, so that shows up as an ebook to borrow. And based on your location, and it'll be different for all of you, depending on where your IP address and or computer thinks you live, it'll pick the, a couple of closer libraries to you or so it thinks. I have no idea where my personal uh, email um, shows up as because I live out in the country and it's always very confused about where I am. But it shows me a, a, a Farmington and Morris and Merrily Wiley have it. And then if you click on the borrow link, 
that is going to go directly into our catalog to that title page. So patrons looking for books in um, Google, if they type in the, the author name and a title or just a title for a book, uh, a lot of times they're going to see on that infograph um, both if we've got the ebook copy, it'll show up. And if we've got the, um, if, if a library around them has a physical copy, it shows up over here in the borrow. So that's good. I mean, that's Google working with just boatloads and boatloads of library data. There's, there's something like the amount of library data that Google has access to right now is like a third of all the data that Google has access to. It is just a massive amount of data. So it's, it scared Google for a long time and they worked on it for years and they finally got it working. All right, so uh, did anybody have any questions on the written package um, on the other things outside of the uh, strat plan and the phased reopening? All right, moving on. So as you all know, or maybe don't, May meeting is the meeting in which we elect uh, new representatives for the following uh, fiscal year. So um, we were supposed to have done that this meeting. That would have meant that in the middle of March, we would have been seeking volunteers. And in April, we would have you know, still been seeking volunteers. And the last week of April, we would have run an election. It was a little busy. So we didn't. Um, so we have pushed this back a bit. We are going to start seeking nominations for positions uh, the 11th of May, and we'll spend a little over a month getting nominations. We'll run the election from the 23rd to the 26th of June. That's Tuesday through Friday. That'll be an online election. You'll Just like we've done the last couple, you'll go to a Google form. You'll see all the candidates, a little bio of the candidate, and then you'll make your votes. Uh, and the new members will start and assume their positions on July 1st. Here's what we have open for the board of directors. These are all three-year positions. The large library seat that Jeff Brooks is currently in is open. The medium library seat that Gina Burr is in is open. And the at-large basic online library seat that Courtney is in is open. And the users group chair, which is a two-year position, uh, is also up for re-election and filling. So um, Jenny will be sending out an email or I'll be sending out an email with Jenny's contact information, one or the other. Either way, don't, don't contact me, contact Jenny. Um, tell her which position you're interested in and just give a little short bio, like a paragraph or two of yourself in your library. So uh, if people don't necessarily know who you are, they know what you're representing and uh, you know a little bit about you to help them make a vote. Any questions about that? And again, if you want to chime in, just uh, unmute yourself and or chat. Not seeing anything. All right. Kendall, are those, can those people run for re-election or are their terms totally up up? Nope, they can run for re-election. We don't have term limits written into our bylaws. All right, uh, we're up to the strategic plan. Um, there was a surprising amount of work that we did on our strategic plan, just not in the areas we had uh, necessarily expected to be uh, doing that work. Um, so our big themes for the January through May timeframe were a lot of system updates and a lot of backend work to try and get us caught up. Um, we bought a new firewall and we had started getting your IP addresses so that we could get that built out and ready to go. That got pushed back. Um, we couldn't install it right now if we wanted to due to uh, uh, social distancing and problems with getting into facilities. So that firewall has been delayed. Um, when we can uh, start going back out into the world, we will um, again run the survey asking you to give us your current IP addresses and we will make that change at some point in the future. Uh, on Monday, we upgraded RSA CAT, the server that runs that. Uh, those of you who may have looked at your RSA CAT profiles on Monday probably noticed 
a lot of things were not working correctly or not displaying the way you're used to seeing them. And that's because we've been on that particular uh, product for over 10 years and have been tweaking it and making changes for 10 years. And every time they do a major update on it, things break. Um, Searcy Dynex engineer spent about 12 hours over the last two days fixing all of our widgets and tweaks and trying to get everything back as close as they can to how it was pre-upgrade. We're pretty close there now. Also, we upgraded web services yesterday. Um, those of you that use Bookmine, not, I'm sorry, uh, Mobile Circ, uh, and you had problems earlier this year after our previous upgrade, um, and we had to give you a kind of hack on your activation link to make it think it was an old version. Um, that should all be fixed now. Um, so if you, I know Morton, I'm not sure who else had that problem. Uh, go ahead and contact Patty or Sarah and uh, we'll, we'll, we can get you reactivated if we need to and then you can use the, um, the version two that's slightly better. Uh, of course, we had to uh, delay our, our uh, membership structure committee. Can't meet. Uh, Jeff Brooks is going to chair that when we are able to meet uh, as a group, or more accurately, when we're able to give, and when I say we, that's the royal everybody in RSA, we, uh, when, when we're able to uh, devote some time to anything other than our current situation, then we'll get back on that. Uh, the same thing with the mentoring task force, which was something that we were going to help provide a host page for, maybe provide some Zoom help so that you could meet remotely, but that's not something RSA is gonna run. We'll just provide a little bit of administrative support for that. So what did we actually do uh, for our strat plan this quarter? Um, so we had planned to do board and user group meetings on alternating days. This is our first alternate day. So this is a Wednesday. Our next meeting will be the first Tuesday. And then we'll go to the second Thursday, second Wednesday, second Tuesday. Uh, as Barbara mentioned, um, we had planned at some point in the uh, nebulous future to do an online users group. Well, today is the nebulous future uh, and we currently have 81 people. So that's pretty good. That's about what our regular combined attendance would have been. Um, so I'll be interested to see how you guys feel this completely online meeting went, uh, if, it's, if it seems like it uh, worked out or did not. Um, there are, of course, some uh, status tweaks we'll need to make as we go forward with that. Uh, we have continually been reworking the, uh, especially the main page of the RSA website, but adding additional rooms of information. Um, that's kind of our initial work just to cover everything that's been going on and giving you links to all the information that was out there. But we also added an RSA policy handbook. We added a director's essential page as well as the COVID-19 page stuff and reworking the front page to hopefully make it a little easier to find things like library closure information dates, although that list is huge at the moment, um, training dates for RSA and things like that. So. Uh, we also um, put together and we've been running a weekly online sharing uh, roundtable session completely in Zoom. That has actually worked very, very well. We're very pleased with that, um, how well attended it's been, how much interaction we've gotten, both in the, in the vocal um, unmuting of mics and through the uh, chat window. We will continue doing that weekly until you know at least the end of May and we'll see what it looks like at the end of May. Um, and then probably monthly after that. Uh, and we may start rotating, you know, maybe one will be CERC and maybe there'll be a cataloging one for cataloging question, you know, time to call in, that kind of thing. We're not 100% sure on how that'll move once we get back to some kind of normalcy in life, but we will continue doing them. It was on our roadmap to be uh, a summer fall plan and it just got moved up. So, and the good news is everybody's pretty um, used to being in Zoom meetings now. So um, they've, they've been well attended and they've, they've uh, had a lot of interaction and we appreciate that. A little bit later, uh, I'm gonna show you guys a network effect uh, graph of holds and how holds are filled in RSA. Um, so that uh, kind of goes into our organizational effectiveness. Uh, we can keep running this statistic over time and make sure that it's 
kind of doing what we wanted to do there. Um, and when we get to that screen, just remember, um, I can probably run this report for your library only and give you the same stat, but based just on your holds filled at your library. So um, those of you that might be interested in that, um, wait till we get to that part of the slide, see if it's information that you might find useful, and then you can send an email to the help desk or something if you would like one for your library. Um, we also, um, the FY21 indexes, when those go, invoices, sorry, when those go out, um, there's going to be a return on investment letter in there, and I've got some data from Circe Dynex on what it would cost individual libraries to replace RSA's service with a comparable Circe Dynex system. So that was another thing in our organizational effectiveness was better informing you of what kind of network and group savings you're getting by being in a consortium rather than doing it on your own. And then on the operating efficiency side, um, we did identify, justify, and plan for three new positions. And up until about April, I'm going to say a week ago, actually, we were fully planning on filling those positions. So um, again, with budgets being what they are and no one knowing what's going to happen in FY22, didn't seem smart to press forward with positions we may not be able to afford. Um, we were also supposed to be working on creating basic and specialized training uh, to be done on video. And we have done that. Anna and her department have converted over some of their training. Um, they've run that uh, several times. They're also going to be looking at what other types of library visits we can convert into online visits um, to make it a little easier to reach out to people who may be several hours drive, but we only need to talk to you for an hour or so. Um, Starting uh, later this month, we'll be looking at converting over the basic cataloging training course that's six or seven hours long and turning that into a couple of online sessions, maybe three, maybe five, maybe 52. I don't know how many it'll take. Several, more than one. I don't think anybody wants to be on Zoom for eight hours in a row. So we will look at converting that over and we're targeting a, a mid to late July beta test on that. Uh, and that again, that'll be fully online. Um, and because Zoom has cameras and we can kind of tell if we've confused you or not, that's why we think this might actually work online versus trying to do it in our old product go to meeting where we could talk to you, but we couldn't see you. So we didn't know if you had gone to the bathroom or were just completely shell shocked and we had no feedback loop. Um, being able to see at least a couple of people on camera really makes it much easier to uh, hold an online meeting. Um, we had talked about what are the possibilities of staff working remotely if uh, we needed to do so. Um, we are now fully conversant in remote staff work. Uh, imagine that. Um, it's not something we uh, foresee continuing doing forever. Uh, you know, when Rails gives us the all clear, we'll be back in the office. But uh, we know we can do it if we need to, at least for the short term. Um, it does make training staff in new things much harder. You guys know this, but at least we can do it. Uh, and finally, um, under operating efficiency, we talked about the system upgrades. We are also beta testing the next version of Symfony. Um, we were beta testing this because it has some great backend tools for RSA staff that we're excited to get that we've been uh, alpha testing with Circe Dynex for the last year or so. Um, but something I think everybody is going to really appreciate is the next version of Symphony, which we expect we'll probably be upgrading to in August-ish, um, August-September timeframe. Um, that also has a new type of uh, patron note, which will trigger an automatic pop-up uh, of the note field. So um, in the discharge checkout, I'm sorry, in the checkout wizard and in the display user wizard, um, there'll be a special note field that is called like alert pop-up or something like that, right? And so for those alerts that you guys are putting in the system um, and potentially blocking a patron for right now so that when the patron pops up, you're like, ah, we have to ask this patron a question or they forgot their purse or we have their watch or whatever, right? Anything that you want to pop up when that patron would be checking out an item or when you'd be looking that item up to grab their phone number or something, um, that will automatically uh, uh, trigger uh, the alert pop-up and it comes up. It's not just that little red alert text on their account. So 
Um, we, you could turn that on for any note field in the patron extended information, but that's just a bad idea because people have been using patron notes for all kinds of notes. And we don't want to burn you out on every patron walking up to the desk having a pop out. So um, we just want to make sure that only important things are used in that field. Um, and that because that otherwise people just click to clear it reflexively. So that's our plan moving on with that. Um, does anybody have any questions about the uh, strategic plan overview? I've been flipping through all the people who have kindly turned their cameras on and it doesn't look like anyone has fallen asleep yet. So I, I will take it that that's a good thing. Okay, um, we have a uh, question from chat um, from uh, Fond du Lac. It says self-check libraries will still need to block if we want to see notes, is that correct? Or bar? Uh, so that's a great question, uh, Nick. Um, I don't know because we don't have a self-check station, so we can't check that. Um, but James, I know you are out there. If you will take a note on that um, so that we can send an email to Matthew and ask him how that would work on a self-check machine, that would be two things now we need to check. Yeah, can you repeat that? Just sorry, I was uh, on a call with uh, about that SIP connection thing real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so Nick uh, asked um, self-check libraries. Will self-checks, uh, if a patron's using a self-check machine to check something out, will that block them from doing so? That note pop-up, would it block them from checking out? Or do will they still need to, to uh, block the patron or bar, I'm sorry, bar the patron uh, so the patron has to come and talk to the staff? Okay. All right, um, I thought I'd show some system stats. I mean, we all know that things are gonna be down, 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 and eBooks are probably gonna be up, 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 but um, Delivery is doing a delivery study and they wanted some delivery stats on RSA's holds and how many holds were actually transiting versus how many holds are getting filled locally. And so, that of course sent me down a rabbit hole of looking at statistics. And so I thought I'd show some of them to you just so that we can kind of get an understanding of where we are and how this might um, graph out into the future. And also some of it's just interesting. So here is day by day uh, ADML checkouts from the 6th of March through the 20th of March. And I believe the stay at home order was launched on the 13th of March. And on the 14th of March, um, Checkouts were, were up, uh, this is year over year, sorry. So this is March 2020 as compared to March 2019, right? So March 2020, uh, here are people scrambling to try and figure out what's going on with the um, COVID-19. Now they're stuck at home and this trend line just keeps going the farther out you look at the data. So if we look at both ADML and e-read, February 2020 compared to February 19, we're up 3,800, almost 3,900 checkouts. February was pretty much the same. Half of March was everybody staying at home and we were up almost 6,000 checkouts in March 2020 compared to March 19. And in April 2020, we are a little over 11, well, 11,259 checkouts higher this April than we were just a year ago. And of course that reflects everybody being at home. So that's a nice trend. People are using um, the eBooks a lot more. That's gonna be good. They'll probably continue doing that into the future. Uh, if we look at total circulation, uh, the numbers go the other way. Uh, so it was a good February. We were up 31,000, almost 32,000 circs in February year over year. Uh, we we're down 180,000 in March and uh, almost half a million down in uh, April, 33,485 is less than a day of CERC for RSA on a normal time frame. So uh, that's and, not to be uh, unexpected. Go ahead, Beth. Oh, I have. I just have a question about the um, ADML mm -hmm. um, statistics because I know we've um, dumped in probably twice of what we normally pay just to ADML in our ADML um, Advantage account. 
So I wonder how much more collection that we might have. Um, Cause we, like I said, we've been putting quite a bit more money in our ADML collection than we normally would. Yeah, so we haven't changed the amount of money that we are spending on ADML. ADML was fully funded by libraries and we will be, um, we had planned to already have done it um, to, to request an increase in the amount of uh, annual fees that ADML libraries pay because we usage has been going up and we haven't increased fees for four years. I will say that the uh, ADML selection committee spent about twice what they normally spend towards the end of March to buy a whole bunch of books right after everybody went home. Um, so there was, there was a big flush of books towards the end of March added in ADML, um, much higher than normally would have. Uh, ADML is the Alliance Digital Media Library. Um, that is the overdrive collection for public libraries in RSA. Well, I, I just wanted to say too, is um, with our uh, Advantage account, we share everything that we buy. So I'm looking at a lot on our reserves. And if I see we have patrons that are waiting for certain titles, I dump in our papers and it's open up to everybody else. So I think more and more um, Advantage libraries are doing that too. So that could help with the numbers. Yeah, and uh, Navu. Um, generously donated a thousand dollars to be spent on uh, ADML checkout. So um, a week or two ago, um, I think Alyssa went through and filled a thousand dollars worth of holds or bought titles that were all on hold um, and spent up that thousand bucks real quick. So uh, there's been some extra money going from there. And we, uh, we thank Navu for their, um, this is I think the third time now they've given us a thousand dollars to, to buy uh, extra materials. So that's always uh, appreciated when that happens. Uh, this is Jane Easterly. We also um, added 4,000 always available titles. Oh, that's right. Was that the, was that the free, the free group that uh, Overdrive put out there? Right. It's Duke Classics, which, I mean, people can find them on Gutenberg or whatever, but it's easier when they're right there with the other things. So it was over, it was definitely over 3,000 classics that, that were added in March. Cool. And I know um, E. Reed Illinois had added several, like all the Harry Potter titles, I think right now are unlimited use and some other things. So, um, you know, the, the some of the e-content um, e vendors have been, somewhat aggressive about trying to uh, help libraries out and get more. Uh, yeah, that's actually, po that's actually uh, Pottermore, I mean, JK Rowling, basically. The first book is available to everybody and in multiple languages. So far as I know, it's now themed other than the first book, but there's like 20 different languages of the first book. To, to clarify though, when we did buy more right when we all closed, we were basically, you know, taking money out of the stuff that we should be buying in June, just so that there was more knowing that people were gonna be accessing it. So it's not, it was just a, a shift of the use of that budget. We didn't actually increase our budget any because well, we have a fixed budget. Good point, Gina. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, there are approximately 95 RSA public libraries in ADML and we have not increased the budget, I don't believe in four years, so. Um, You'll probably be seeing emails about that soon, I would imagine. Um, some other interesting stats, holds. I did not expect holds would tail off to this uh, level. Um, I thought holds would have held up better. Um, but when you go from you know 55,000 holds in February to under 3,500 in April, you know patrons are feeling it as well. So. That's not great news. Title counts, just because I got real curious about how this had affected things. Um, title counts have stayed relatively flat. I mean, year over year, we did some weeding and a bunch of titles got removed. So this is February to April, but if you look from April 19 to February 20, that's a very gradual tail off on the number of titles and items. So it's not a big jump. Um, there was a big jump in April uh, as far as the number of item counts in the libraries, but I've heard some anecdotal evidence from several libraries that they are weeding their collections uh, 
and doing inventories to give their staff something to do. So I'm, I'm not certain, uh, super surprised that, that we're down on items. Um, titles are down a little bit, but again, that's indicative of more weeding than anything else. So here's that um, report that I talked about that I had to do for Rails, right? So Rails wanted to know how many items per month we put in delivery in an average year. So I looked from March of 2019 to February 2020 because that was a standard year, not a, 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 an infection year. And when you look at the raw data of the little over half a million filled holds in RSA. These are holds that were actually filled, not canceled holds, not holds that um, went you know, to the wrong place. These are holds that were either filled or were expired on the hold shelf. So they were sent to a library for a patron to pick it up uh, and the patron either got it or it was one of those couple thousand titles a month that expire on the hold shelf. So of that little over half a million, 18.86% of holds in RSA are filled by the pickup library, 18.86%. Um, for those libraries that have branches, uh, whether that's school libraries or public libraries like Illinois Prairie, Peoria, could be DMACC, um, you know, any, any, any RSA organization that has branches, an additional 8.02% of holds were filled by a branch of the, the organization. So, you know, Peoria Public North sent something to Peoria Maine for pickup. That was 8.2% of the fills. And then 73.12% of all holds in RSA were filled by an item from delivery. That was the number delivery wanted to know because that's what they need to plan for. But I, I did not think this number would be that high. I was kind of surprised that it was that high. I know it's that RSA fills 96-ish percent of all holds inside of RSA, but I did not expect this number to be quite that high. So um, this is something that we'll be, or at least I'll be keeping my eye on as we move forward um, as a report, just to kind of see, especially if uh, once delivery starts making some changes to the delivery process, including you know maybe rerouting some libraries to a different hub or whatever, just to see if these numbers change at all. Um, this is a report, I believe I can run this report on a per library basis. Uh, if you don't have branches, of course, your intra-branch filled would be zero. Uh, but for like Peoria Public or Illinois Prairie, it might be interesting to see, you know, how many are pill filled at the branch the patron wants to pick up versus how many come from another one of your libraries versus the system. Yes, Melissa, you have your hand up and I can see you on screen. So if you, if we want this report for our library, should we send a, a ticket to the help desk? Sure. As opposed to emailing you directly. Yeah, I made the report, so I will have to, and that was a good two weeks ago. So uh, a lot has happened in two weeks. So I, first I have to figure out what report it was I ran to make this report and then, then limit it down to just your library. But like I said, I think I can recreate it at a per library basis. So, and if this is something that we get several requests for, this might be the type of thing that we would wanna add to an end of month reports package, just for an informational purposes for folks. Any questions on this? I'm sorry, the numbers are kind of small. That's why I put the overall totals up on the top part there. Uh, question, um, holds come through in about three days. So what would moving libraries to another hub do to transit time through Rails delivery? Rails moves materials. Ooh, I just disappeared in my video there. Um, Rails moves items between hubs nightly. So um, some of the talk right now would um, revolve around increasing the area served by the Coal Valley hub. So basically if libraries are moved off of an East Peoria hub to a different hub, that would add one day of transit time is what would happen there because things come back to the hub and they are sorted first to go out to um, the intra hub delivery route and then they're sent off and then when they get to the other end of the hub they're sorted overnight and put into delivery for the next morning um, in whatever van they need to go in so it does it does add one day but that's about it 
It wouldn't be something that I would foresee changing system settings to try and work around unless it was a huge problem. Because once you start um, tinkering with, oh, these libraries are in this hub and these libraries are in this hub and I want to only fill holds from this hub if humanly possible, what that actually does is it means rather than the system just randomly picking items from different libraries, there's a defined list of libraries that your holds would be filled from first. And only if no library in that list could fill your hold would your hold go out to the rest of RSA. And that might be fine if it's several smallish libraries uh, on one group. But if you are the person who's on the list with Peoria, Fond du Lac, Alpha Park, and you're a small library and you just happen to be in that list, you're going to get hammered for holds. So we don't want to do that if we can possibly stop it from happening. And we don't think that um, even moving things, my personal opinion is moving things from between hubs the only thing that may happen is we, they may have to run a bigger van between the, the hub delivery. Um, I think right now um, our rails, East Peoria runs a regular van. They don't even run the box truck uh, on that nightly hub. And if we moved a significant number of libraries to a different hub, they might have to run the box truck instead of the van. That would be really the only difference. Any other questions? All right, enough of me talking, although I will continue to talk. But um, what we, I wanted to spend the majority of the meeting talking about is much like we've been doing in the roundtables, but kind of focused on how you're reopening, what your plans are, and if our plan for phased reopening kind of meets what you are expecting to be able to do as you start thinking about how you're going to reopen your library. And before we get into this, I just want to make sure that, that everybody understands this is all very much in progress now. Um, you guys probably saw yesterday that the governor announced a five stage plan based on regions to reopen the state, which is going to have differing effects on different areas of RSA, depending on what region you're in. Um, I just found out during the board meeting um, on Friday, there's a consortia committee meeting to talk about how we are going to plan to reopen libraries, how delivery is going to interface with us, that type of thing. So uh, we will have more information for you as far as um, how all this is going to go. And we're going to try and keep RSA's phase reopening plans um, in as much in kind of conjunction and in phase with the other consortia and the large public standalones in the Chicago area so that when Rails starts to think about rolling out delivery again, they don't have to deal with, well, RSA is doing this, but Praycat's doing that and Swan is doing this. And so each of the hubs has to do something completely different. We don't, we don't want to do that. And also we don't want, um, patrons in one part of the state looking at another part of the state and going, well, What's up? Why, why, why are these people getting full services and we, we get nothing? Um, now that may happen with regions. You know, we could have some regions in RSA that are less affected and they are in the can open up earlier phase. That may happen, but at least it would be on a regional basis and there would be some explaining for that. And just uh, to let you know, this is all tentative. I'll learn more on Friday, but for right now the plan in delivery is they are relabeling every item in the East Peoria delivery hub and in fact all of the delivery hubs in Rails and all the items that are in the hubs will be returned to their home library. Uh, assuming that delivery can figure out who the home library is. Those of you who do not stamp your books with a library name probably will be harder for them to figure out where it goes. But um, they want to return all the items in the hubs to the to the items home library. No matter where it was planning on being sent to, it's just going to get sent back to the home library. I also believe, maybe not on the same day, but within, you know, probably that same week, I believe delivery is planning. And again, this could change Friday, but the last I heard on Monday was that delivery was also planning on trying to pick up items that are in your library and stranded right now that need to go back home to a different library. I don't think they'll do that on the same day that they're dropping the things in the hub off, but that is 
Right now, the, the upfront plan, they would do that, and then they would kind of stop doing delivery for a bit uh, again. But they want to try and transit as many items home as they possibly can, both out of the hub and maybe from member libraries. So um, look for um, email, not only from RSA on that, but more importantly, from delivery. Um, that'll be in those delivery route emails that delivery sends out every now and then. Uh, that's where you're going to want to look for um, canonical delivery uh, information. Uh, oh, well, look at that. I had a whole slide for this. I built this slideshow yesterday, and then my computer crashed, and I lost uh, three hours of building the slideshow, which was about the last two thirds. I had to rebuild it again. Uh, so that's why I forgot that this slide was in there. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, I've had um, some people ask, um, if they could run delivery on their own, or if RSA could run delivery, or if there was a different way to get libraries moving between, uh, materials moving between libraries. Those of you that were around pre-merger, um, specifically very close to the merger, um, North Suburban Library System, that is the uh, CCS libraries, uh, Aurora and that kind of area, kind of ritzy North Chicago libraries. Um, North Suburban Library System ran out of money and they closed. And, uh, oh, my, my puppy wants to go out. Come here, come here. Urgh. Stop scratching at the door. People will not like that. Um, so North Suburban ran out of money. And so the libraries in North Suburban started running delivery themselves. They were paying for it. And the state library wasn't real happy about that because as you all know, delivery is the purview of the state library. It is funded. Uh, by the legislature to the state library to make sure all people in the state have uh, delivery. And at once the merger was done and the state library uh, finance situation cleared up a little bit, they forced the libraries in the North Suburban, the previous North Suburban library system, to take the money back for delivery, even though those libraries didn't want it. The libraries were like, no, no, it's a donation, you keep the money. And the state library was like, no, you're going to take the money back that you spent on delivery because we don't want legislators hearing that libraries are willing to run delivery on their own dime. Because if libraries are willing to run delivery, why would they pay for it? So just um, when people ask why RSA is not gonna get involved in moving items between library A and library B, that's why, because we don't want um, rails to lose funding for delivery. We don't want the state library to lose funding for delivery. And we don't want uh, anybody in Springfield feeling like that's not an essential service that should be paid for. So just a quick note on that. Uh, oh, and one last note, no system wide holds until we have delivery. That only makes sense. But we want patrons to continue to place system wide holds. Because if we lock your library down to local holds only, which would make filling curbside holds much easier, I will admit, um, as soon as curbside is done, those holds are still only fillable by your library. We don't have a good way to know which library holds should have been local and should have been group and should have been system wide if they're all placed as local holds only. So we want people to continue to place system wide holds so that as libraries open up, and are willing to pull and transit items, the largest group of items are available to fill holds for patrons. Otherwise, patrons are gonna be waiting much, much longer for the one or two you know, items that you have in your library that could fill a hold when there are other items in RSA that could have potentially done that. Push the space bar, Moose. There you go. No, push the space bar. All right. So here's what we're going to talk about today. Draft reopening, four phases. Um, so I was trying to be as realistic with system services as I could be. Um, not having delivery, of course, is a big limitation. And it'll get updated uh, after today's conversation. And it'll get updated on Friday after I talk to the rest of the consortium managers uh, and hear what their plans are. And we kind of hash out what we think the normal should be. Um, the current phase, this is phase zero in that draft plan, is uh, all libraries are closed to the public. That's where we're at now. 
Um, based on what we're hearing, we've pretty much met your needs. We've done as well as we could possibly do with the system to make sure that what you guys need is done. Um, and it's important to note here that libraries can move to different phases as they feel comfortable. If your library does not want to offer curbside service and wants to wait until you've got limited patrons in the library, um, or potentially you're forced to do that based on your regional specific with the governor's new plan, that's possible too. This is, we've, we've set this up so that if a particular library wants to move, we'll support you as well as we can for what you want to do. And you know, like Kathleen says, Peoria Public started doing curbside pickup today. We had a conversation with them yesterday afternoon to make sure that we had the system set up as well as we could to meet their needs. And curbside pickup is actually phase one. So this is the first thing we'll talk about. Phase one is uh, you're allowed to do services to patrons outside of your library, right? So that would be either curbside or home delivery. We can turn pick lists on for your library. Um, and it doesn't matter if your library is open or closed. I would recommend probably that you keep your library closed in the system. Because if your library is closed in the system, everybody's close date right now is set to the 12th of June or later, if you told us later. So let's say you hand a curbside patron a DVD that would normally have a two day checkout. It's not gonna be due until the day after you're open, which right now would be like July 13th, okay? Um, so you're not forcing patrons to come right back the next day. You can always override that. You could use a special due date wizard, but um, having things, your library is closed helps with a lot of things on the back end. We can turn on pick lists when your library is closed. Uh, you tell us today, the next pick list that runs, we'll, we'll pick that up the next day. So tomorrow morning, if we turn it on this afternoon, tomorrow morning, the 6 a.m. pick list would have all the items it, for your library, even though you're closed. Now, we would not want you using the pick list to fill holds. You should use the, um, the available holds wizard in um, workflows. There's a worksheet uh, on how to do that because you can sort that list by pickup library. So you can only see the holds on that list all in a row that would be able to be picked up at your library. Um, now, the thing with that is now we've got a list of holds that may be no longer good anymore, your patrons don't want. So I would kind of recommend you don't pull all those, you contact the patrons first to see if they even wanna come and pick it up because who knows if they're gonna want to or not, right? The, the important part here is that RSA is not running hold notifications right now either. So if you make those holds available for the patron, the patron's not gonna get a notice from the system. Because if we turn that on, libraries that are closed are also going to start getting notices, which we don't want, right? So um, when you're running curbside delivery, this basically, this is a one-to-one -one communications channel between the patron and you. The patron says, hey, I want this thing. Can you get me the thing? You say, yes, I can get you the thing. Here's where, here's how, here's when. That's kind of how we've got the system set up. And if the patrons give you stuff back, RSA recommends that you just set them aside for 72 hours, don't touch them, don't scan them, don't do anything to them. I know there was some talk on the director's listserv about some libraries uh, are checking things for bed bugs. Um, and if that's your local practice, go ahead and do that. Make sure you're protecting yourself. I'm sure you will be, but don't check them into the system right away. Let them sit for 72 hours, then open them up, right? Scan them into the system, discharge them. Anything that's your item that you get a transit slip on, check it out to your no transit user. Delivery's not running. There's no reason to put that thing in a bin when it could be available for your customers. But any item that goes to another library, the recommendation would be that you fill out the transit slip, put it in the delivery bin and wait for delivery to pick it up. If you don't do that, things are going to start getting lost because they're going to be, well, that's not my item, but you know, I can give it to a patron Then it's going to come back. But if it, and then in that case, yes, it would get transited again, but if you put it on a shelf and it sits on the shelf for a while, ugh, now it's lost. Okay. So um, the recommendation would be somebody else's item. The system tells you to transit it, set it aside for delivery. And when delivery starts running again, they'll get it back home. I think that's it for phase one. Yeah, does anybody got any questions for me on phase one? 
And this is, this is kind of the overview of the, the documents a little deeper. Um, I can cover phase two and phase three, and then we can come back and discuss how you're planning on reopening. I think that might work better because we can kind of hear what you're thinking of and then figure out if that fits in our plan, maybe. I have a question for you, Kendall. Shoot. Could you repeat what you said regarding um, check-in? Let's say at the certain amount of time we are accepting, you know, returns from patrons. They they hand us a bunch of books. We set them aside for three days. Okay, we're at that date, and we are now going to discharge them. So if the item belongs to my library, and yet the transit slip comes up and says send it to Morton, someone wants it, then say again what the steps are. Okay, so until delivery is running, I would tell you don't send it to Morton because it's just gonna sit in your library. Check yeah. it out to your no transit user. That is the user you would normally use if an item came up on your pick list and you're like, ooh, I can't send this, it's damaged. I, I know I have a local patron who wants this, they just haven't set the hold in, whatever. Um, and if, if you don't have a no transit user, um, email the help desk and we can help you set one up. But basically what that does is it just checks it out to a special user so that it appears when you look in the catalog, it appears that it's online and available, but it's actually checked out. Okay. Um, so now the, the, the bad part of that is if somebody's got it on hold, you've got to actually look at the item to see who's got it on hold, but it will get it out of transit because you're not going to want to be transiting that item back and forth. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sure. But if it's somebody else's item, transit it on. Go ahead, Beth. What we're doing with that is we've sorted our blue bins um, and the items that go to other libraries that are owned by another library stay in the bin, but the items we own that are on hold for another library, we're actually putting on a cart, but we're leaving them in transit for now. Um, just so that we can see if we have holds for patrons, because we're doing curbside pickup. If we have holds or patrons call in and want an item, then at least we can tell where it is right now. Um, is that a problem at all? I don't think so, no. I mean, be, because it's until delivery comes and picks those items up, they're just right. sitting there, right? So, and if, if the system told you to transit an item and you had it sitting aside and you're like, oh, a patron called for that and they want this title and that's the only one I've got in my library, delivery's not coming to pick it up. You could check it out to them. All right. it does is untransit it. It didn't right. fill the hold on the other side yet anyway. And then when it comes back from that patron, it, the system will tell you to transit it again. I think the, the big thing I don't want people to do is to shelve other people's books in their shelves or somewhere in their library that's not set aside for transit because those things will never get back to their home library. And just FYI, you did get a, a report at the beginning of the month that said these are things that, that are gonna get converted to uh, lost in transit status. We're not running the report that actually converts things to lost in transit status because we know everything's been in transit way too long. Um, and we will not run that report that converts and puts the note, the lost transit note on items until at least probably July. I think we have, uh, James and I have a, a note on the calendar to take a look at it um, in early June because that report would run on the 10th of June but it'll probably be July before we run that because again, delivery has to be running and everybody has to have cleared out their library prior to us wanting to run that again. Um, there's a couple of questions in the chat. Um, basically, if, if it's not your item and it's saying to transit it to another library, should you send it back to the owning library or the item that it says, the library that it says to transit it to if it's trying to go, like say it's Kiwani's item that it says to send it to Morton for a hold and you're at Peoria? So the, there's, there's one time I believe that delivery is going to empty out the, the delivery hub and return everything to the home library. But I believe that's a one time only deal and it'll happen. Oh, I, I thought I answered that to everybody, but it turns out I was chatting with somebody privately. Um, so yeah, so that's only going to happen once as far as I know. So wherever the computer tells you to transit it to, that's where I would transit it to. Because once they delivery has cleared out the hub, Right, and then they say, oh, we're gonna pick up books for other libraries. I assume delivery is just gonna send it to wherever we tell them to send it to, so. 
I, I have another question, Kendall. Go ahead. Um, sorry if this gets really specific. So um, here in Dunlap, we, oh gosh, Friday the 13th was really Friday the 13th, as we all know. And then our library, Dunlap Library, was open through the evening of Monday the 16th. And by that time, a couple other libraries around us had already closed to patrons. So we had we had a wild, crazy day that Monday, the 16th of March. When we were done and and the, we were locking the doors for the patrons, we saw that we had never processed one blue tub of transit items, of hold items. So we looked at that and we said, well, there's nothing we can do about it now. And so we put a note on it and no one has touched it since March the 16th. What do we do with that? I mean, you can look at it. You can scan those with the uh, check item status. Okay. Uh, wizard, okay. right? Um, and that'll tell you if it's in transit to Kiwani, it'll, it's probably going to stay in transit to Kiwani. Again, if those are your items, sure, sure. pull them out of that tub. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, we, at, but anybody else's items, just wherever the system tells you to send it, send it. Okay, thank you. We truly haven't even touched it since, uh, or looked inside since the 16th of March. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and this is going to be the big, um, one of delivery's biggest issues trying to restart, because you all have their bins, and you have lots of materials, especially libraries that are going to be doing curbside are going to have a ton of stuff to renew. And, and a ton of stuff to send out to other libraries. And you're going to overwhelm delivery the first several days. They're just not going to be able to keep up with the amount of delivery that's, that's going to be required in some places. So when I say delivery is going to have to slowly transition back into delivery, it may be that they tell you, hey, we're going to pick you up on Tuesday, and that's all we can do this week. And it might be another week before you get two day a week, and then they'll roll back into normal. But they don't, the delivery's already purchased a, a whole ton of new tubs to spread out to the uh, delivery hubs because they're almost out of tubs in the hubs right now because the, uh, everything that was in the hub is packed. Everything that's in a library, you've got their tubs and they have very few over, overflow tubs left. So delivery's already ordered a bunch of tubs, but those are going to get overwhelmed in the first day or two as well. So. Um, it's probably going to, we need to get everything returned back before we really want to turn the hold system back on uh, full, full speed. You know, if you get a transit that comes in and the system says, oh, I can fill a hold with this or, oh, I need to send this home. Yeah, go ahead and set it aside and, and send it wherever. But we don't want to turn the system-wide pick lists back on for everybody and tell you to start pulling all those things until delivery can handle that rush. All right, well, that gets us into phase two. Uh, and phase two is where you're allowed to do some sort of patron services inside your library. Um, I'm not sure what phase of the governor's plan this is, but this is basically, you know, you've got X number of square feet and you divide that by some number and that's the number of patrons you can have in your library. And you've got all your public access computers spread apart so people aren't too close there. Um, and again, we're trying to figure out, okay, from the system standpoint, how can we serve you and give you the capabilities you need while also keeping in mind that not all patrons are gonna be comfortable with coming into the library and we don't wanna be annoying them with hold pickup things and stuff like that if they're not gonna to go to the library. So here's where we were thinking on that. Um, you've got your curbside and home delivery still if you're running that, plus a number of patrons in the library, whatever that is, it'll all depend on the library. We could mark your library as open in the system at this point because you've got patrons walking in. Probably a lot of your heavy users are going to be coming in over time, or you could choose to remain closed. And again, the, the thing with choosing to remain closed is nothing will be due until the day after your, your opening date. Okay. Um, so again, those short checkout items, you know, if you remain closed, they're going to get that longer checkout. If you open up in those short checkout items, one or two days for videos, patrons have to return them or they're going to start getting overdues. Um, one thing I uh, neglected to mention in phase one, RSA will still be running the due date reports to make everything due on uh, June 12th. Uh, I would imagine in phase two, we may continue to run that report to make everything due on June 12th. 
just because we don't want to overload you and have patrons bringing stuff back when they can't get into the library or whatever. We can run, oops, uh, we can run your, your hold pick lists. Um, again, you're gonna be stuck with local holds only until delivery spins back up. Um, again, you're gonna wanna quarantine items that come in and then keep your local items, transit those that go to other libraries. Um, and we may start talking about um, turning notices back on towards the end of May. Um, that's a decision we'll make towards the end of May when we figure out who is open and who's comfortable with that, right? Mo a lot of these um, notice reports are set up for everybody, right? So if we turn it on for one library, we're actually hitting a whole group of libraries. There are some libraries have their own notice reports and some libraries share um, a group of notice reports. Um, so depending on what everybody's thoughts are on days when they want to reopen, and I'm sure RSA is going to have to run a survey on this probably the latter part of May, saying here are the options, which one of these are you choosing, do you think, and what, what are your time frames, do you think? Um, you know, just in the board meeting alone this morning, we, we had Peoria Public has opened as of today for curbside service. Um, and yet we have other libraries that like Morton is talking about maybe not opening patrons, allowing patrons in the library until August or September, right? And just doing curbside services when those start up until that day. That's two very different um, sets of, of patron interactions. And we just wanna make sure that we can, with our notices, system-wide notices that we're covering as many people as we can without again, bugging your patrons that, that don't have access to service yet. And again, this, this towards the end of May is going to be real fun because we're going to have to be talking to all of you and figuring out where you're at. And the thing that is not in here but probably should doesn't need to be mentioned is if you're planning on opening and offering any service at all, please let us know so that we can talk to you and make sure that we've got the system set up as best we can to help with what you need to do. Uh, oh, that was from Anna, okay. Um, phase three, um, this is basically everything's running. People are coming into your library. You might still have some like limits on the number of people in the library. We may still be doing social distancing or maybe not. I don't know, it's hard to tell from the government's phase, the governor's phase plan. All I know is we're all gonna be in face masks until we die at this point. Um, but other than that, I'm, I couldn't quite figure out what the plan on indoor services once we get into later phases was. But phase three is basically pretty much everything's running, right? Delivery's running so we can be doing system-wide holds again. You've got patrons in your libraries. You may or may not be quarantining materials. That's not our call. That's going to be Rails. That's going to be ALA, whoever the smart people on that is, right? Um, some libraries may continue to just quarantine things for three days for, you know, the next year, just to make sure that uh, the inevitable, you know, they're always talking about the second wave, just prepare for that and just quarantine things for three days, keep yourself safe. Again, system-wide pick list running, regular notices running, shout bomb, hold notifications, turn back on. Um, at this point, when the majority of, of, pay, of uh, staff are back in the library, this is one we're gonna wanna start talking about turning off uh, at home access to workflows. Um, right now, if you've got staff that need to do work in workflows from their home, you can have your manager or a director from that library um, send an email to the help desk with who needs the service, why they need it, and an IP address um, from the person who's accessing it. Um, so that we can set you up in the firewall. Um, we'll leave that running probably until we hit phase three, maybe a little after phase three. Um, your home IP addresses will change. Some change very often. Um, mine has not changed in a month. Um, I added mine, well, actually a little over a month because I added it like the 29th of March. Uh, and my home IP address has not changed since the 29th of March, but I don't have a static IP. It's just hasn't changed yet. So um, you will be able to, up until this phase anyway, you'll be able to, if you've got staff working at home that actually need uh, workflows access, we can hook you up with that. Um, 
this is the phase when we're going to want to start running lots of reports for cleanup, right? So everything you've checked out to that no transit user probably doesn't need to be checked out to that no transit user anymore. So we'll want to give you as many reports as we can to clean those things up. Other circulation issues, overdue issues, things that probably, you know, that were checked out in January of 2019 and now we're talking August and you still haven't seen them yet, it probably should go lost, you know, those types of things. So there's just going to be a ton of work to try and get us back to where we should be at this point. But again, libraries have to be open, serving the public, holds need to be running, all of that has to be working before we can do a lot of this stuff. Otherwise, we're just going to do it again. Um, and at this point in time, RSA will be making bulk changes to due dates or whatever you need us to do, right? Um, and the, the notices in RSA CAT, um, if you're going to start doing delivery, uh, curbside delivery or something like that, if you send a ticket to the help desk, Jamie can change the banner on your RSA CAT profile to say, hey, we offer curbside delivery. See our website for more details or something along that order. So that right there in RSA CAT, it actually says that rather than just the kind of stock, hey, my library's closed and we'll reopen whenever. Okay, so if you are changing your service level, let us know so we can change the banner in RSA CAT. Um, we'll be taking all those out once we get to this phase. And then the last phase, the new normal, whatever that is, February 2020 operations or whatever we end up being. Um, <laughs> who knows what that'll be? This, is, this was the, yeah, okay, whatever. We're, we're doing whatever we can do at this point. So, all right. Um, now, from you all, in who in the next, and, and unmute yourself or chat at us in, um, via the chat interface, in the next week or two weeks, who is planning on offering um, curbside service? And if so, let's discuss what you're planning on doing so that we can see if our plans kind of meet what you were thinking. So this is Elizabeth and Henry, and we are starting today we're going to do pickup from four to six on Wednesday, from one to three on Friday, and from 10 to noon on Saturday so that we hit a night, an afternoon, and a weekend. Um, we're asking people to let us know ahead of time so that we can gather all the stuff up. And I have, I have carts that I borrowed from the school and the cart that we own, and I have plastic bags and all sorts of stuff. But um, but my plan is to remain officially closed in RSA just so that we keep getting that extended due date without any issues. Um, and so that when they get their due date slip, it has the extended one already on it. And you're planning on doing your, the, the onus is on the patron to contact you to let them know that you're coming and what they want. Yes. And I did send a, a notice to you guys if you could turn our pick list back on when we're closed that'd be awesome so um so that if we have people who do it that way um and and i've put out in our newspaper and our facebook and our webpage, you know here's the library phone number here's the temporary cell phone number that you can call or you can text you can facebook message us you can send us an email um and you know we've got four lined up for this afternoon, so we'll see. All right, uh, let's see. I, some people were sharing in chat. Looks like Bradford is moving to curbside on May 11th. Toulon is going live on the 12th. Um, Toulon's doing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday so that they have 72 hours spacing between things coming in and things going out. Yep, something to consider. Wyoming is starting Friday by appointment only. And again, I would assume everybody in chat who's answering in, you have the communications chain worked out so that you know who's coming and what they wanna pick up. That's, from my standpoint, that's the important part, right? You could pull all those holds and put them on the cart, but you still have to contact the patrons to tell them to come and get them. Uh, 
So anybody want to chime in and say, if you're waiting to see what happens with other libraries before you uh, kick it off and, and do it yourself? Hi, Kendall. This is Mary in Wyoming. And I'm not a very good waiter, so I'm just going to dive in there Friday. In fact, I've already put it on Facebook, and there's been a huge positive response. Um, my plan is that we'll get the request through email or phone message. Sorry, my cats are going wild. And I will respond and assign them an appointment time so that we can space people out. We don't want any gatherings in the parking lot. It will be, they stay in their car except to open the trunk. We exchange materials. They can leave their returns in the trunk. Um, I'll be the only person going out to the car. My staff, some of them will be working in the building. And we've got that all worked out. So, yeah. I'm trying to discourage uh, my patrons from placing holds in RSA Cat, just because I think that would be messy. Um, some of the materials they're looking for would be checked out if we own them. A lot of them have no idea how to use RSA Cat. Yeah, so phone and email is my preference. And I would imagine that, Anna, do you know what day our round table next week is? Is it Wednesday or Tuesday? She's looking. I can find out pretty quick. One sec. If I can just figure out how to unmute myself and mute myself and all that. Um, I think we've been sticking with the Wednesdays, but we're alternating mornings and afternoons. So the next one is Wednesday the 13th at 10 a.m. Here, I'll drop the link to the L2 event in the chat. Anna, right. sometime way down the road in the future, I wonder if you could come to Wyoming and teach my patrons how to use RSA Cat. Okay? I I just, it, sounds, it sounds fun. I haven't gotten to go anywhere to really. I will long offer time. you I'm, whatever bribe I can muster up that you would accept. I work for coffee, so. Oh, we have an awesome coffee shop. Deal. Okay. Put that on your calendar whenever you want to come. Okay, send, send me an email or something. I will. We'll, we'll Thank plan you. it for, like, I don't know, October. <laughs> Thank you. So Anna put the uh, event for the next round table in the chat. I would imagine that that round table is going to be a lot of people sharing their curbside experience. So if you have any questions or thoughts on curbside, I would definitely attend next Wednesday. Um, and we may have um, some slight changes to our phases by next Wednesday, depending on what some of the other consortia are doing. Um, at least we'll know better what rails and delivery are drafting their plans to be uh, by next week. So I would highly recommend as many of you come to that as are interested in learning about this kind of thing. Those, like I said, those have been a lot of fun. Does anybody, is anybody planning at this point? I know there are some people that unofficially were electing or letting one or two people in the library, but is there anybody who is kind of officially planning on moving to one or two people in the library at a time, what we would consider phase two? By people, you mean the public and not just our staff, right? Yes, by people, I mean public. Yeah, I'm not letting them in anytime soon. <laughs> they have germs. I'm seeing gross, no, not yet. Taking appointments for anybody who wants to use a computer one at a time for one hour. I know uh, Jeff Brooks from Pekin was talking this morning about they may look at trying to get some carts and on nice days put a computer outside uh, and then let people reserve it uh, to use. That's an interesting workaround. I forget who was uh, at a round table last week. Somebody was talking about they have an atrium and they might let they might put a public computer in the atrium and let one person in the atrium to use the public computer. I don't remember who that was, but that was another um, thought people were, were thinking about um, potentially doing. Yeah, Beth. 
Well, what we did today, um, and it was just a, a single use, is we had a student who is going to Iowa State University in Ames, and she's been home, and she had to take a physics final. And they have internet at home, but it drops out, and she couldn't have that drop out. She needed to take a 50-minute test at a scheduled time. What we did, she brought her, she had her own laptop. We just, um, I came in early that morning, this morning, I unlocked our meeting room. I shut our meeting room off from the rest of the library. She came in, um, she, if she had any problems, she could call us, um, but she just came, took her test and left, and then I just shut the door behind her. So it was completely um, contact free, <laughs> but we did that because of the issue. She was threatening to drive to Ames to take a 50 minute test and then come back. So we saved her 10 hours of a drive. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would also recommend checking with your lawyer for go ahead. The very first page, the very first thing in that draft plan is a, basically a lawyer restatement that says, while RSA does not recommend you talk to patrons or indeed work with them in any way, we will support you if you do so. Just don't sue us. And I think those of you who have Phil and Zini for your lawyer, Phil has told you definitely not, don't even, don't even try offering services. That is one of the things that um, may be covered on Friday. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> I think on Friday, um, so Heartland had put out um, a, a um, so Rails put out a, a thing from the Rails attorney that said, you know, until we read the full thing, we can't really make a recommendation, yada, yada, yada. You know, maybe your um, government, essential government service, but and your board can decide that, whatever. Phil Lanzini is the attorney for the SHARE uh, Heartland Library System, and Heartland put out a, a statement from Phil that basically said, don't even think about it. You're, you're not you're not covered by the, the one May order, don't even think about it. Um, so um, we, we, and when I say we, I say I, um, I sent both of those statements uh, in an email to um, Deirdre Brennan, uh, who runs Rails and said, Dee, could you please ask the state library um, what the actual answer to this is? Because it seems a little confused at the moment. Um, and so Dee had talked to the State Library, and that is one of the things that is going to be, oh yeah, there's Doug sent the, uh, the letter, the link to that uh, Heartland letter. Um, so one of the things we're hoping to hear on Friday is that at least the State Library is working on the correct answer based on, you know, reading through the new order and how it's laid out. So if we hear anything, I'm sure if Rails hears anything uh, more specific than just we need to see the, the wording of the new order. It'll come out via Rails channels as well. But if I hear anything um, that's like official from the State Library or whatever, I'll pass that along too. Um, what was Phil's limit on when to offer services? You can look at that letter that's there. Um, I don't think he, he put a limit on when you can other than whenever the governor's expanded order expired because he, under his thoughts, we were not covered at all. Oh, Mary Meeker says she emailed the governor's office through the Corona page and they gave her the green light. Oh, well, that's interesting. Can you do, if Mary, do you have an email you could forward to me that I could, at least on Friday, if nobody has the um, firm answer, I can say, well, one of my members emailed the governor's office. Yes, I can. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So at this point in time, that doesn't sound like anybody's really planning on moving to phase two anytime soon, other than the occasional onesie twosies. Um, does anybody have any um, concerns over what, um, how we 
you know, kind of plan on keeping the system running during phase one? Uh, is there something that you might feel like you're missing or maybe is there a way we could make something happen for you? And I'm gonna mute while my uh, clock dings here. Kendall, would you want that email to go to your RSA help or Rails? I've got several emails for you. Uh, send it to kendall.orison at railslibraries.info. Okay. All right. Thank you. Kendall, this is Laura with Dunlap again. Mm -hmm. And um, I appreciate you sharing earlier regarding like the history of the uh, um, uh, libraries delivering for themselves or, or whatnot and, and how that was a, a problem many years ago. Um, if some libraries do share books, you just don't want to know about it? Uh, that's correct. Yes. Okay. I, do I don't it. want to know about it. And, and honestly, as few people can know about it as humanly possible, I, I would tell you don't do it. Um, and the reason why I would tell you don't do it is it only takes one patron who gets a book from another library to go, how did I get this? Hmm, I happen to know the state legislator. Let me ask him how I got this. Got it. <laughs> got it. Yeah, it was, I will say this, it was a big deal to the state library to make sure that those libraries took the money for delivery. A really big deal for the state library. Anybody else have any plans on reopening in the next couple of weeks that has not already chimed in? Got a pretty good spread on what people are planning to do or not do, which I kind of expected, to be honest. I guess I could tell you that we're starting to accept return of our items beginning on Friday. So um, we're limiting the time that patrons can drop them off because we don't know how many we're going to get and we're trying to spread it out. So we'll be accepting returns in May on Fridays from 10 to noon and Mondays from 5 to 7. Um, and that is our plan as of yet. And then our plan would be to start curbside on June 1. <clears throat> Although now having seen the new, pl the, the governor plan, it is possible we could do curbside earlier. I have started I have an automatic email now, now template email that goes to anyone who emails me to ask me what my plans are for curbside service since Peoria is doing it um, but we're still also waiting to make sure we have adequate PPE and we're just getting our staff back in the building this week so I'm moving much slower than is my normal tendency which is <laughs> odd for me but I think warranted in this pandemic What happened there? What is going on with my screen? Hold on. There, that's better. Yeah, I think for rail staff, we don't know when we're gonna be back in the building. I'm kind of strongly assuming it'll be shortly after the 1st of June. Um, at least for those of us that have individual offices, we may have to look at those people who are sharing offices and see if we have enough room between. Um, again, we'll all be in masks, I think. Um, that I'm assuming Rails can provide us masks because I don't know if you've been on Amazon looking for masks lately. There are not many, although there are some available right now. Um, but yeah, we, as far as even RSA goes, I'm not sure what our um, office plans are. The nice thing is we can do our job for the most part, pretty much the way we've always done it from home. Thank goodness. Um, and so we're, we'll continue doing that as long as we need to do it, but, uh, but we'll move back. Um, 
Oh, a couple of people were asking Alyssa for her response on the uh, wording for your template. Not surprising. Uh, and I'll put it just another um, note out there for everybody coming next Wednesday to hear the tales from those doing curbside. Um, and hopefully, I don't, does anybody have a good link to the governor's actual multi-phase plan? I was not able to find one before the meeting, the board meeting kicked off this morning. That would help me um, figure out even where those regions were, let alone um, what exactly the wording of those plans were. I haven't seen the plan. The regions were like hospital regions. Um, and Peoria, it goes up north of us, all the way over to Iowa. Um, we might lose some on the south and the eastern side being in a different region. But I think most of us are covered in the Peoria region. Okay. Yeah, I'll try and I, I need to hunt down the full wording of that and see how it's going to affect RSA kind of is an overall. James just sent me something off uh, on our local chat here. Um, somebody emailed the help desk. Um, will Peoria be charging uh, user profiles, uh, changing user profiles on cards that were issued during quarantine by other libraries? Um, I.e., would they be able to change a CompUse profile for a patron with a card elsewhere? I would fall back to the standard RSA rules of if it's not my patron, I cannot help you. Please go see your uh, owning library. Um, you know, hopefully the, um, if a patron would call Peoria, and that's another good question. I don't know what uh, what the rules are. I don't know if, if Peoria Public is only going to be filling holds and requests for their patrons, or if it's just anybody who calls Peoria. Randall um, said they were not turning away non-Peoria patrons when okay. he talked to the director's group last week. Okay, good to know. So, okay, well that, but that is a good question though. Those of you who are going to be offering curbside, if a patron from another library called you uh, wishing curbside services, would you help them out with that? Ooh, I'm, I just got a link. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> do you pay me taxes? Well, and those patrons that do pay Joel taxes to come to my library. Uh, so, um, no, I mean, we don't really, I, we haven't started curbside service. Oh, this is Lexi. Um, but I, we would, I would plan to just provide service to all patrons regardless of where they were from. Well, and my guess is that that question that you brought up from James. Um, I haven't seen the ticket, so I don't know. But my guess is that that's referring to like CompUse cards that may have been created during the closure. And this is probably an issue for everyone's library, is that depending on how you're verifying patron info for CompUse cards, you've probably created co CompUse cards for some people who don't really live in your district, depending on how you're verifying all of that. So there, or people may have been calling other libraries because you know they can't get anyone at their library because it's not one that has staff in the building. So there will. So I'm wondering if the question is kind of like, if I have you know a CompUse card that should really be my patron, and now I want to create them an account when all this is over, should I just change that account from a Peoria CompUse card to a Morton adult card? And my response would be that under the policy, you treat it like it's a like it's an old card issued by another library and create a new account. You know, if it, if it is someone that should be your patron, you would create a new account as if, as if it's any new patron that has a pre-existing card at another library. So that's my interpretation of a question I've only heard a part of. <laughs> I think you got it right though. Um, and people in the links have shared both the PDF version of the Restoring Illinois plan and a link to the map of Illinois showing the regions. Uh, looks like we are in regions. Well, we have some people in 
region six, I think, maybe one or two, potentially. Mm, some in three, some in two. I don't think we should have any in one. And potentially maybe one or two libraries up in region seven. But it doesn't it only go off the four though? And that's it for uh, moving on to phases. I thought the governor said that it only goes off the four uh, areas, you know, the Northeast, North Central, Central, and Southern. Oh, well. And that's why they have them on that one that uh, somebody sent, the WGN uh, one or something. Yeah, well, they're, so they, the, the overall map that was linked that has the whole bunch of regions is color coded into four regions. And we still fall into at least two, if not three of those. So it'll be interesting to see how this ends up affecting us. Yeah, I, I watched the um, uh, video from the, or the online from the Peoria County Health Department and Mayor Artis from Peoria was there. And he had big concerns because he felt that Peoria was being grouped with Rockford. So there were issues with that. So I do think they're the big areas rather than the small. All right. Okay, um, so it sounds like I haven't heard anybody raise any huge um, um, issues with our phase plan. That's good. Um, but it'll get um, changed somewhat based on what I learn on Friday. And then I'll, um, we'll send a, a more final version out to everyone. Um, and if we have that done by Wednesday and we need to talk about it on Wednesday, we can. Otherwise, uh, in our Wednesday roundtable, I'm sure we will spend a lot of time discussing um, curbside and how it's going and how people can roll it out or uh, not even going to think about rolling it out. Um, those are always fun conversations. Anybody else have anything for me before I yield the rest of my time back to the chair? Barbara, it's all yours. Well, thank you everyone for all the good interaction and the good ideas. Um, I've been reminding people as often as I get a chance to remember that uh, your library and your community have put your, their faith in you as the director of the library. And um, you, you, we should feel empowered by that. I know we wanna make the very best decisions for the library and for our community, um, but you are one of your community's leaders and uh, you know, we need, we need to stand in that as, of, as often as we can and um, show leadership in that as often as we can. I've had a voice several times to be able to say, both in the paper and on the radio, um, you know, we want to keep everyone safe. I mean, encourage people to take walks, talk about social distancing, and, and that's just another voice. And, and that probably happens more in small towns than it does in big towns. But um, just to be encouraged, everyone, you're doing a good job. Our next meetings will be August 4th and November 12th. Who knows how, but um, they, will, they will be happening. And thank you again to RSA to keep us going all this time. If there isn't anything else, Kendall, are we good? I think we're good. Um, oh, one last question to everybody. Um, just go ahead and, and punch it into the chat there. Um, how was today's meeting? Did this work for you guys? Or if there's anything that you can change, just punch it into chat. Um, I'll have the chat log after the meeting and I can look through that. And if there's any, anything germane that we uh, may be forced to do in, in our August meeting, if we have to do it completely online again, um, I'll make sure that we try and, uh, and upgrade how we do this. This was, this is our first uh, attempt at a fully online users group meeting ever. So, um, I just want to give you all the, the chance to say, you know, it, it was fine. Do this. Okay. Right. Thanks, everyone. And now the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.